Hello, everyone, this is CRH Films, and this is the eighth episode of The Last of Us series. While the wounded Joel is lying in the garage, Ellie falls into the hands of cannibals. The episode begins with beautiful winter landscapes of one of the few towns where life still somehow thrives. In one of the local establishments, David, the leader of the community that managed to survive the zombie apocalypse, reads a fragment from the Bible. One of the girls starts crying during the prayer. David approaches her to console. It turns out her father died during another supply run. The girl asks when they will bury him. However, due to the strong frost, the ground is too hard, so David says they'll have to wait a bit. After the prayer, everyone disperses to their homes. David personally bids farewell to everyone. When everyone is left, his assistant named James approaches him. The men discuss the plan for further survival. With luck, the supplies will last a maximum of two weeks, and that's if they ration the portions to the residents. David mentions that he feels like James doubts his leadership, but James responds that he's just scared due to the imminent prospect of starvation. There is also information about a deer seen by one of the survivors. The men decide to go hunting. Meanwhile, Ellie takes care of the injured Joel, moistening his lips with water to help him drink a bit. Due to a shortage of supplies, Ellie faces a challenging task. She takes a rifle and heads into the woods in search of something edible. After a few minutes, Ellie comes across a rabbit. The girl tries to silently approach it, but the rabbit seems to sense danger and runs away. Ellie doesn't want to lose such prey, so she runs after it, but after a few meters, she plunges face first into the snow. The hunt continues. Soon, Ellie sees a real deer. Ellie lies down on the ground and, with a precise shot, injures the animal. The deer runs away, leaving a bloody trail behind. Ellie runs after it, but David and James are the first to find the prey. Making sure no one is around, they decide to take the animal. Quietly approaching them, Ellie orders them to put the weapons on the ground and step away. Instead, the man begins to talk about the difficult situation he and his community are in. David suggests exchanging the meat for something useful. Ellie is interested in some medicine for infection. David orders James to return to town and bring penicillin. Left alone, Ellie approaches closer to unload the rifles. David suggests moving to a house and starting a fire to wait for James in more comfortable conditions. Throughout, Ellie keeps the man in her sights. David, in turn, begins to talk about himself and occasionally asks Ellie for information. He even proposes for Ellie to join them despite the community starving without her. But a big heart and faith in God won't allow him to abandon someone in need. The girl is shocked that even after the end of the world, the man remains a believer. But David says he started believing in God after the epidemic, before that, he was just an ordinary atheist school teacher. A couple of years ago in Pittsburgh, Cicadas and the Fedra began to wage war for power. Then David, along with like-minded individuals, decided to embark on a quest for a better life. Along the way, they welcomed anyone willing to join until they ended up here. Ellie says they were just lucky. David smiles and says he doesn't believe in luck. Everything that happens has reasons, and those, in turn, have consequences. They did not expect such a harsh winter. One day, David sent four men in search of something useful. Only three returned. The one who didn't return is the same man who wounded Joel. He knows that the one traveling with Ellie killed his comrade. Ellie becomes even more cautious. David orders them to lower their weapons. These words are not addressed to Ellie but to James, who overheard the entire conversation. David asks for the penicillin and allows Ellie to leave. The girl returns to Joel. Since her knowledge of medicine is close to zero, Ellie decides to inject directly into the wound. The medicine itself will figure out what needs to be done. Meanwhile, in the survivor's town, they prepare for the meal. One of the men brings fresh meat to the kitchen. When asked by the cook what kind of meat it is, the man replies it's deer. As people calmly feast, David, James, and the injured deer enter the room. From the looks of the people, David understands that James told them everything. The leader assures that justice will be served tomorrow morning. The deceased man's daughter asks to kill the guilty ones and immediately receives a slap from David. The girl falls. David helps her to get up and says that she still has another father, meaning himself. After a prayer, the community starts consuming the meat of unknown origin. In the morning, Ellie gives another injection to Joel. Even with the naked eye, it's clear that the medicine is starting to take effect. Then she goes to collect snow in a bucket to have water for the horse when it melts. Standing near the house, 
She notices something or someone disturbing a flock of birds. She decides to check and stumbles upon armed men led by David. The leader warns his partners to be more careful and watch all sides, as the opponent is quite dangerous. But he orders the girl not to touch. Due to a shortage of supplies and another hungry mouth only complicating the situation, James expresses dissatisfaction. However, David explains with a single glance that there is no need to doubt his plan. Frightened, Ellie runs to Joel. She gives him a knife and tells him that bad guys are coming here. Ellie wants to try to distract them, but if they find Joel, he will have to solve all the problems himself. She disguises the entrance to the basement, sits on the horse, and rides behind the Justice fighters. Ellie shoots at them, then tries to escape. James runs straight at her and hides behind a tree, waiting for prey. With a precise shot, he kills the horse. Ellie falls and loses consciousness. James approaches her and cocks the gun, after which a gunshot is heard. But this shot was made by David, as he wants to spare the girl's life. He takes Ellie in his arms and orders the other two to return to town, taking the injured horse with them. He instructs the rest to search the houses and find the killer. Alone, they begin to inspect the houses. Joel hears the footsteps of an unwelcome guest and realizes that one of them will get what they deserve. A bandit finds the poorly disguised entrance to the basement. At the last moment, Joel rises and hides. The man descends into the basement and sees a mattress soaked in blood. Joel appears immediately, permanently calming the man with a knife to the neck. The rest walk the streets. One of them hears a sound like something falling. He calls his partner, but he doesn't respond. Later, the man sees his unconscious comrade lying on the ground. Disregarding safety precautions, the man approaches closer, receiving a blow to the head as a consequence. Regaining consciousness, the men find themselves tied up in a room. Joel tries to force one of them to speak with his fists. Understanding that this doesn't bring the desired result, Joel takes out a knife and stabs it into the bandit's leg. This argument makes the man more talkative. He says that Ellie was taken to the settlement. Joel stuffs the handle of the knife into the man's mouth and then asks to show where they are now and where they took Ellie. The smuggler recommends that the answers of the two be the same, otherwise, the men will envy the dead. After obtaining the information, Joel thrusts the knife into the man's chest. The other man says he won't provide any useful information to Joel, but the smuggler says he believed the first one's words, after which he swings an iron pipe. Meanwhile, Ellie regains consciousness locked in a cage. David is also sitting in the room. He says he won't let anyone harm her. Before leaving, he recommends Ellie to come to terms with Joel's death. Left alone, Ellie tries to find something that will help her leave this place. Soon, David returns, bringing a portion of food. Ellie's gaze is directed to the corner of the room where a severed human ear lies. David says he brought deer meat, not what she thought. Ellie realizes that they will also chop her into pieces and serve her at the table. David delivers a fiery speech. They had to start eating people to survive. Only a few men in the city understand what kind of meat they are eating. He also says that Ellie is the same as him. A born leader who can unite and lead people, just like him. David proposes for her to join them and together lead the leadership over the city. He is tired of leading people by himself, and with such a strong personality as Ellie, who, like him, can make the toughest decisions for the good of the community, it will be much easier. Ellie asks what will happen to Joel. David promises to release the man if Ellie joins them. David puts his hand on Ellie's hand. The girl immediately grabs the man's hand and tries to break a couple of fingers. All this was to steal the keys to the door. But David manages to prevent the plan from being realized. The angered man leaves, saying that the idea of cutting Ellie into pieces isn't that bad. Meanwhile, the bloody trail leads Joel to the cannibal's hideout. He breaks the lock and sneaks inside. Inside lies a horse with no signs of life and all the provisions records of the cannibals. Moving on, Joel comes across a horrific sight, beheaded human bodies. David returns, but this time accompanied by James. The men grab the girl and pull her to the table. During the process, Ellie bites David. As soon as the man brandishes a knife, Ellie shouts that she is infected. The cannibals roll up Ellie's t-shirt sleeve and see traces of the cordyceps on her arm. It turns out David is now infected too. Taking advantage of the shocked state of the men, Ellie thrusts the knife into James' neck and runs away. David tries to shoot the audacious girl but misses. Grabbing a smoldering piece of wood on the way, Ellie hides. Later, David rushes to search for her. Waiting for the right moment, Ellie throws the stick but misses. The smoldering wood hits the curtains, 
enveloping them in flames. Despite the fire, the man moves through the room in search of Ellie. The girl grabs a knife, then hides under one of the tables. Waiting for David to come closer, Ellie throws herself with the knife at the man. She wounds him in the abdomen, but David still manages to push the girl away. Ellie notices a missed machete and crawls towards it. But the man catches up with the victim and climbs on top of her. He reveals another dark side of his personality, he is a pedophile. Ellie manages to reach the knife and unleashes all her anger, turning the man's face into a bloody mess. Exhausted, she runs out into the street, where some man grabs her. But this time, it's Joel. The smuggler puts a jacket on Ellie and leads her away from this unfortunate place. This is where the episode ends.